A Dog of Flanders Chapter 5 The Gift No one knew Nello was gifted. He really did not know it himself, and that was good. If he had known, he might have been tempted to become proud. God would have no glory then, and after all, that is why God gives each of us special gifts, to bring glory to himself. If others had been interested, they might have noticed that what Patrash saw. Nello drew pictures. In his pictures he captured flowers and birds, trees and butterflies. He caged them by drawing them on stones because he did not have paper. For charcoal and brush he used whatever would make a mark, a soft stone or a tiny piece of discarded chalk. It did not matter. Nello loved to draw. The evening glow of a sunset inspired him as he and Patrash sat on the river bank and watched the sun sink below the horizon. The rosy coming of dawn to him was breathtaking. He never talked about his artistic passion to Grandfather Yehan because the old man had no money to buy him paints or pencils or canvases. Indeed, he could not afford to buy him even a few pieces of chalk or charcoal. Never, Nello never asked his great-grandfather for these things, but he did talk with his Heavenly Father about them. In fact, he often prayed, so earnestly that tears came, rolled down his cheeks and dropped onto Patrash's fur. Nello liked talking with his Heavenly Father because he knew his Heavenly Father heard and would answer his prayers. One day, Grandfather Yehan surprised Nello. You're nearly twelve now. Almost a man. I could die content, Nello, if I knew that when I am gone you could earn a moderate living and own this hut and the little plot of ground around it. I want you to work hard and be respected by your neighbours. It will make my heart glad and it will please our Lord. He has given us so much. He has provided for us all these years and it is much more than we deserve. He is such a good God. You must always honour him, Nello. Nello said nothing. He loved his great-grandfather and would never do anything to hurt him. But in his heart, he really did not care to work the soil. Yes, he wanted to keep the hut and the land and he wanted his neighbours to respect him. But what he wanted to do more than any of these was draw and paint. He knew artists, like Rubens, made their living by painting. He wanted to be one of them. He wanted to use his gift, which he was only beginning to realise he had, for God's glory and for his own livelihood. Nello confided in Patrash. He whispered his ideas and dreams in Patrash's ears at night before he went to sleep. He discussed colour and light with Patrash as they carried their neighbour's milk to town. When Patrash saw a piece of chalk or sniffed a piece of discarded charcoal on the sidewalk or path, he stopped until his master found it. On sunny afternoons they lay on a soft river bank, Nello mixing clay for paint and smearing it into scenes on smooth rocks. Not even Grandfather Yehan saw these warm, glowing masterpieces, only Patrash. In fact, Grandfather had very little appreciation for art. Now that he was old and often bedridden, he would have been troubled by Nello's thoughts and plans. He had never understood why people travelled to Flanders just to see the work of Rubens. One artist's work was just as good as another's in his eyes. Tilling the soil was a worthwhile profession. Scratching lines and daubing colours on canvas would leave a man penniless. There was only one other besides Patrash to whom Nello could talk about his daring fantasies. That was Aloise. She lived at the old ruddy brown mill on the grassy mound. Her father, the Millow, Miller, was the most well-to-do tradesman in the village. Aloise was a dainty little girl with soft features and rosy cheeks. Like many Flemish, she had dark eyes inherited from some Spanish ancestor. Years earlier, the Spanish had conquered Flanders and lived there. While Flanders was under Spanish rule, the groups mixed and their descendants had traits of both. Not only was Spanish influences seen in their faces, it was also evident in the architecture 
of many majestic palaces and homes. Wide arches, lovely gardens and tile roofs were all influences from a time past. Alois was the richest child in the hamlet. She had no brothers or sisters. Her pretty dresses never had holes in them and at the sweet shop she bought as many fancy candies and treats as she could hold. When she went to church her flaxen curls were always set off with the prettiest and laciest bows. Even though she was just ten, foolish men talked about what a good wife she would be for their sons, as if money and pretty looks made a good life's companion. Her family name and money were not important to her though, and her favourite playmates were Nello and Patrash. Alois was often with Nello and Patrash. They ran in the snow, they played in the fields and gathered daisies and blackberries. They went up to the old grey church together and they often sat together by the broad fireplace in the mill house. One day, Mr Coggez, Aloise's father, came by where the three were playing in the newly mowed meadow behind the mill. He was a good but somewhat stern man. What he saw disturbed him. There was Aloise, his lovely little daughter, sitting in a pile of hay with the big, dark head of a trash in her lap. She had made wreaths of poppies and blue flax flowers to hang about both their necks. Besides them sat Nello, drawing their picture with a stick of charcoal on a piece of clean, smooth pine wood. The miller stood and looked at them for a moment. His daughter was a beautiful little girl and he loved her very much. The scene brought tears to his eyes. Nello was a good boy, but Mr Coggez could not let Aloise spend time with him. Nello was poor, and she was rich. The father had greater expectations for his daughter than having her interested in someone with no name or wealth attached to his future. As he approached, Mr Coggez covered his true feelings by speaking roughly to Aloise, telling her she should be helping her mother. Aloise began to cry, but obeyed her father and went inside. He then turned to Nello and, grabbing the piece of wood from Nello's hands, he scolded the young artist in a trembling voice. Why do you fool around with such things? Nello's face turned red with embarrassment. Looking down, he replied, I draw everything I see, sir. The miller was silent. He felt somewhat ashamed for being so harsh and, even at a glance, he could see that the picture was a good likeness of his little daughter. Then he stretched out his hand with a frank in it. Do you think you are an artist? You can find better ways to spend your time. However, it does look a little like Aloise, and her mother would probably like it. Take this money and let me have the picture. Nello overcame his embarrassment and looked up. It was an uncomfortable situation because he knew the mil- Miller looked down on him for being poor. Nevertheless, he was still respectful. The man was Aloise's father and an important member of the community. Please keep your money and the portrait too, Mr. Coggess. You have often been good to me. Then he called Patrash and the two walked home. We could have used the money, he murmured to Patrash, but I could not sell her picture.